Hello drone racers. This is a pile of radios I don't want to use anymore. And this is what I'm going to use to replace them. This is the iRange X IRX4. And it is a four in one transmitter module that's going to fit in the back of my Tyrannus and make it so I don't have to use any of these ever again. This is a four in one module, basically meaning it has four different transmitter types. They're all listed here. I don't know what they are, but it will allow you to, through software in the Tyrannus, control this module. So these have been around for a while, but they used to have knobs or dip switches or all kinds of things. This is all done in programming, and we're going to go through the setup of that and testing of it today. This is my tried and true Tyrannus X9 Plus that I've been using for years, and I've already got the back open. So you just take the top plate off or the back plate off, and oh, there's how old it is. And this module just slips in the bay. You've got to make sure you line it up right so the pins line up because this is going to use those pins, and then you pop it in. The next part is a little bit harder because you have to be running version 2.2 code on here. And even if you've already upgraded to 2.2, you might have to redo it because you need the multi-protocol enabled for your code. So what you have to use for this is OpenTX Companion 2.2, Google it, download it, get it all installed. Then you need to connect your radio. What you're gonna need to do is pull these pins in and turn it on and you will boot to the bootloader. You need a mini USB cable. It's not micro like your phone uses or lightning like your phone uses. It's a old fashioned mini connector, but you need to connect that and then plug in the USB port. So before you do any of this, make sure you back up the configuration of your radio in OpenTX. I'm not gonna go through all the details here. I'm gonna give you the quick and dirty version. So here we've got a radio. We wanna go to settings, radio profiles, make a new profile. Here I've chosen my radio that I've got set up here and I'll go into settings. So here you can see, this is a Tyrannus X9D Plus. So choose your QX7 if that's what you have, it'd be fine. That's my name, my radio type. What you need is multi-module. That's what you have to have for this. You may have other things that you've selected, but that's what you have to have for this. I also have Lua scripts, which we're not covering today. I am in mode two and my default channel order is T-A-E-R. That's gonna cause a problem for some of these little drones, but we will cover that in a little bit. So, okay. And then you go here to download. So you wanna download the firmware, save it, and then it will just ask you if you wanna install it. Go ahead and do that. That will then load the new firmware on the radio. After you do that, Turn off, unplug it, turn off your radio, turn it back on, and, to open TX. and you won't get that yet. What you'll have is it's gonna go through and update the EEPROM. So it'll go through, update the EEPROM, and then reboot again. Then it will probably complain about the SD card. So your SD card, you need to go load the right SD card files. Go through this, turn it on, plug it in, get USB plugged in again. Now you have access to your SD card. So what you want to do is get the right files on there. The same download spot that you went to, go to download SD contents. And here is a zip file that you need to unzip and load onto your SD card. Replace everything that's there and go ahead and get that all loaded. Then you'll be able to load it, you'll have sounds, it won't complain about the card and it will sound stupid. So the one last thing you're gonna do, which this isn't really a 2.2 upgrade, is go to open-txu.org and then go to the version 2.2 resources. And what you'll have here is the Amber sound pack. We're all in love with Amber and that's what you need to run on your radio, so you're not wrong. You just download the file from here. It is a RAR, so you'll have to have a program to unzip it. And then once you unzip that file, it will extract a sounds folder just replace the sounds folder on your SD card with this. And you can do that with the radio plugged in. You don't have to take out the SD card because we held the sticks together and turned it on and plugged it in. We have a removable disc and we have sounds. We're just replace this file with that one. I've already done that. That's why we had Amber's gorgeous voice when we turned it on. So that was probably the fastest Tyrannus 2.2 upgrade video on YouTube, but it got us what we needed. It's actually a really easy process. Just back everything up. It's, it's kind of hard to screw up. Use OpenTX though, and it makes it easy. Now we're here with the radio. Now what do we do? 
Well, now we have to set up a model. What are we going to use first? Let's use the good old reliable E010. This is one of the models that use those garbage radios that I showed at the beginning, and I want to fly it. And hey, look, I've already done it because there's E010. I'm going to, I'll go ahead and set up a whole new model for you just so you can see what I had to do here. Go through here and set up a new model, create model. Here it is. In this case, it is a quadcopter. Now the order is wrong because I have this set to TAER. I have way too many models set up for TAER. I don't want to go through and redo them all, even though I probably should. If you don't have many models, just change it to TAER or change it to AETR, and that will be a better way to set it up in the long run for you. But I'm on TAER, so I need to change the order of my channels. So I need AET, so I have throttle, so I need to make this three. And it's A, which is ailerons, which is roll. So this should be channel one. And then pitch, which is elevator. So that is A, E, so this would be channel two. And then I have Y, which is rudder. So if you never knew what T-A-E-R or A-E-T-R was, that's, that's what it means. So now that's already on channel four. So that is good to go. Now if I go into this new model, I won't bother naming it right now. The first thing it's going to do is set it to use internal RF. And I want to turn that off because I don't want to use this radio. I just turn that off completely. Then now I have external RF and I have lots of options here. I have PPM, DSM2, that will be interesting. And then the one we need to go to is multi. So this is honestly the worst part of this because I can't find a really good list of what all the quadcopters should use for this module. If you have one of these and you made it this far and you know of a list which option should be chosen for all of the radios, if there's a definitive list, let me know. If not, I'll probably start making one. So here I've checked and the E010, so I'm on multi, and then I need to go to the MJXQ. That is what these E10s are. So then I select that and then this other option, I need to go to E010. Look at that, hey, and they're not all gonna be this easy. There, now I am set and that will work. The other thing I wanna do in this case is I wanna bind on power up. So if I'm selected on this radio, it will have me set up so now I can exit. Now I will power on my quadcopter, I'll power off my radio, power on my radio. Welcome to OpenTX. And look, the light stopped flashing, it's bound. I have throttle. Look at that, how cool is that? Here's where it gets more difficult because I feel like I'm back on my spectrum because I have to start worrying about channel direction and whatnot. Everything's just been right for years with the Tyrannus. Everything just knows and is right, but it's not going to be here. You're gonna to have to be careful and figure it out every time. So we know the throttle's right. We'll test yaw, yaw works. So we were turning the right direction. If I go forward, oh, there we go, was that wrong? So my pitch was backwards. I was pushing forward and I was moving backwards. And then we'll go right and left and the roll is correct. So I need to go in here and fix this on my radio. I will go in all the way to outputs. So outputs is where I wanna be. And now I am, I wanna fix my pitch, which is my elevator, which is channel two. So I'll go down to channel two, select it, go through, and I need to reverse channel two, so that's the reverse option. So now I think it will work. There we go, now I can go forward and backwards. Go ahead and install the battery so that's not messing with it. But now because I did that, I have to reboot my radio and it will bind. The alternative is to have to go into the menu and hit bind every time and I don't want that. You might be able to set a switch to bind. That'd be more something more advanced. I just got this working today. So that might be a advanced class later. So now we wanna go forward, go forward, back. Go left and right. Now, I can fly it. That works and it is a way more controllable model with this radio. So I wanna try one more. See this, this is the King Kong 130 that I just reviewed and my, all my complaints about it, I basically blamed on myself not knowing my radio. Hey look, I have my Tyrannus now and I can bind to this, hopefully. I'm just trying this for the very first time. Maybe you'll see this, maybe you won't. I'm gonna go through and make a new model. Should be easy enough. Create model. So now, 
This though should be T-A-E-R because that's what Spectrum uses. So I think I'm gonna be okay in this case. That's part of the reason I didn't change it, but we'll confirm that later. Go into the menu. I'm gonna turn off my internal module, turn on my external and go to multi. And then I wanna go through and find DSM. So I have several options here. I have X, DSM X, I have DSM two on 22 milliseconds, which is probably what this is going to be. I tried binding it with a USB, but that didn't work. But now I'm gonna do it with a battery. I went and grabbed a battery that I've got here. So I will hold down the bind button here. There we go. Depending on your model, you may or may not have a bind button to need, but this one does. I know there are other ways you can do it, but hey, it's here and I'm, it's gonna work. There we go, we're flashing, meaning it's in bind mode. Now on my radio, we'll go in and go up to bind. And I think that looks good, looks promising. There we go, that's solid. I'm gonna reboot everything just to be safe. Okay, so I'm in OBS, I'm connected, I have a battery connected. Let's go to receiver and see if it shows anything. Oh yeah, the channels are totally messed up, so I'm gonna have to fix that. So I got it. I had to redo it and redo the model. It, I did have to set it up as ATR. I don't exactly know why, but it did work. And a thing I learned in the process is you can go and set it under hold down menu, set this to ATR, and that just seems to affect it while you're setting up the radio. So, or setting up the new model. So you can go and set this, and now I can change this back to TAER so my next models are all right and then it will set up my new models right next time. And I might be able to just change it and leave it that way so it doesn't mess up everything in the future. So there, I set it up, I rebound it. And then here under configuration, I had to change the spectrum type to spectrum 2048, and then that worked. And now under receiver, I have my throttle's working, my yaw is working, everything is working. It still says on the channel map, T-A-E-R. I also went through and set up my normal inputs that I set up every single time. So I set them up the exact same way. All my switches are in the right place. They all work properly. My arm in my modes from last time is all set up. So now I can arm it and look there, it's armed. And now I can use horizon mode to test it properly. And I can set up the beeper on my switch, which I was not able to do with my other radio because I didn't have enough channels. Yay, so now also, oh, I'm so excited. Now my receiver is right, so my stickman is right, my rolls are right. I expect the Fly Egg 130 to be a whole new beast after this. Many people also commented that 3.2 is available for this. It's now called an FF Pico Blocks. So I'm gonna confirm that and we're gonna get this updated and we're gonna test this again this weekend because I think this is gonna be a whole new beast. Kind of what's nice is this receiver, this model is still $93. You can almost buy this in that mode. You can almost buy this with a Spectrum receiver and buy this module for the same price as just getting the FreeSky version. So, that's a pretty good deal and you get a really sweet combination. I, uh, I think I'm gonna be really, really happy with this, but we'll find out. So if you found this useful, leave a thumbs up and comment if you know somewhere that there's a list of what to use with this and especially this, I haven't figured this one out yet. And oh, here's the E11, I don't know what that is. Somebody may have a definitive list, let me know and I'll link it down below. If not, maybe I'll start making one because I'm gonna have to figure it out. Oh, and I do have one of these orange DSM modules. Uh, this is going to be a giveaway. Who wants it? So until next time, remember, I am now officially spectrum free.